Episode 93, Unconditional Love for Your Daughter-in-Law with Leanne Austin. Welcome to Latter-day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and certified through the Life Coach School. Together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. The mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship can be some of the most fraught relationships in our lives. Why is this? Well, there are many reasons, ranging from how this relationship is portrayed by the media, what one thinks about the relationship upon entering it, comparison between one's relationship and others like it, and how one's own relationship is with their own mother-in-law. But even with all the odds stacked against mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationships, it can be a beautiful one that is fulfilling to both parties. Coach Leanne Austin has been both the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law, and while those relationships didn't start off being great, she has come to learn ways to make them amazing. She wants to pass this knowledge on to each of you and has created a special course on how you as a mother-in-law can have a great relationship with your daughter-in-law. Leanne believes in the end, we all just want to have a great relationship with those in our lives, and working on that relationship is worth the time and effort. Come listen as she tells you more about this course, what you will take away from it, and how to join. So on this podcast, I love to talk all things that help us have a better life. We, any, any coach that I have on here, that is our main focus. And today's coach, Leanne Austin, is talking about a relationship that I think is so important and one that I think gets overlooked a little bit, not overlooked in the sense that typically we all know that this sometimes is a hard relationship, but there's not a whole lot of help out there in how to help this particular relationship be better. So Leanne, I'm excited to have you with us today and I'm going to let her um, introduce herself and kind of what we're going to talk about because that leads into who she works with and who she coaches. So Leanne, I'm throwing it over to you. How are you? Ah, awesome. Thank you so much, Heather, for having me here. So I'm Leanne. I've lived in Georgia for the past 22 years. I have a husband, four boys, two daughters-in-law, a dog, and two grand doggies. So (laughs) um, I learned about and began life coaching in 2018. And at that time, unconditional love really resonated with me. Most of us are really good at loving others, and I help people become experts at loving themselves. And I spoke about that with you on the podcast a while ago, but now I have created a love of my daughter-in-law course, and I love the daughter-in-law relationship. So whether you love your daughter-in-law already, or if you're really struggling with her, This course is to help you just increase that connection and love with your daughter-in-law. So good. And one that I think a lot of people probably struggle to admit that they might be having a problem with. They don't, I think there's some shame involved in that and they don't really know what to do with it. So I think it is kind of a hard one to say, yeah, I think I kind of struggle with this relationship. And I might need some help. I love that that this is here, right? Just for that reason. This is such an easy way for people to, to get some help is working with somebody, a coach like you, who can help them in ways that they might not even realize that they could have the help that they need. Yeah. Well, and I think it's a really important relationship in a lot of ways. And it's something that even if we can just get a little more, more curious about and, and, you know, aware of, and even if we think, Hey, we have a pretty good relationship with our daughter-in-law, there's ways to make it even better. And so just, just noticing that as well. And sometimes it's, we don't, and we don't like her at all. And so just seeing what's (laughs) happening there. Yeah. Well, here's what I have noticed about me where you have four boys. I have one boy and three girls. And as he has left home, I have noticed it being harder for me to have him leave home than my girls. And this is what I think the reason is. I've kind of thought about this a lot. I think the reason is that 
I feel like he's leaving me for good. Like he's going to get married and he'll gravitate towards his wife's family. And depending upon my relationship with him and his wife, might not have the desire to gravitate more towards home. My girls, on the other hand, I know are gravitating towards home and are going to be around. So what having him leave has been more of like a final thing. Does that make sense? Does anybody else feel that way? Or is it just me? No, totally. That totally makes sense because it does tend to be that we go more with the wife's family. And so, yeah, that makes sense that if your son's leaving, you're like, wait a second, this daughter-in-law is taking him away from me. Totally makes sense. This is like going to be forever, even though he's Uh not even close to being married or anything. I just, that's a fear that's behind me. And so it it feels really important to me to have some tools in my pockets before Mm -hmm. I even get there so that I can have a relationship that is hopefully good from the get-go. Yeah. uh, I love that. And that's what I do. I love just, yeah, making it even better. Okay. Well, I need this. (laughs) (laughs) I always feel like I, I need all the tools I can get. So life we know is about relationships, right? It's all about relationships. And that's a good thing. That is why we're here. I think learning to navigate those relationships is what helps us to become like God and like our heavenly mother. And um, one of the top negative relationships that is portrayed in our theater, like cinema and literature is that mother-in-law relationship. That's why I said in the beginning, we talk about it a lot. It's kind of got a bad rap. Why do you think that relationship is one that we, that gets such a negative attitude towards? Well, I think the media definitely plays a role in how it's portrayed. Um, I also think we have ideas on what we think our daughter-in-law should or shouldn't do. And then we also go and compare our situation to our friend's situation and how her daughter-in-law is doing things. And then even for some of us, it's how we are as daughter-in-laws and how, you know, what our role has been in that role is, you know, throughout our lives. So I think there's a lot of components that probably feed into that negativeness. Yeah, I think you're right. And as as you say that, I look back at at all those different things, like my relationship with my mother-in-law and the media, and I can see how it does have a a really strong effect on how I perceive that things could possibly be in the future and leads me to kind of the worry that I always, that I have there in my, in my head. So, all right. So because the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law relationship can be hard for people, you, I know, decided to develop this course. There really isn't a whole lot out there like this. So tell me what what led you to this? How did you decide that you wanted to do this now and at this time? Well, I've been thinking about doing this course for over a year now, and I've had lots of years of experience with my daughters-in-law and I've had life coach training and there's a lot of love and inspiration that have gone into helping me create a beautiful relationship with them. And as I'm learning that a lot of people don't have a beautiful relationship with their daughter-in-laws and that's more of the norm. And so as I've been thinking about it and my daughters-in-law and I started a tradition this year where every other year we're going to do a girl's trip. And so this year in February, we went on a retreat and we had an amazing time, the three of us together. And I talked to both of them there. I'm like, listen, I'm thinking about doing a course, something with daughters-in-law, you know, how do you feel about it? Individually asking them because I wanted to make sure they're okay because, you know, that's putting some of our stories, possibly pictures and things out there. So I checked with them, got the thumbs up from both of them to do the course. And so it just has been really weighing heavily on me. And I'm like, this is something I need to do. So I put together these five secrets that I've implemented in my life for the past five years and everything that I've done to create a fun and loving relationship and connection with my daughter-in-laws. And that's what I've done. And I just want to share it with everyone because our relationship can be so much better if we can just implement some simple tools to make it that way. I'm glad you brought that up because I did have the thought, oh, I wonder how her daughter-in-laws feel about this. (laughs) I wonder wonder if they're like, do we have a bad relationship? Is that why she thinks we have to do this? She needs to do this. (laughs) No. And they've gotten asked that from different people too. It's kind of funny what everyone says, but they're really, I double check with them on things and they're, 
they've been really supportive and great with this. Oh, so. That's awesome. And yeah. clearly they are wonderful, obviously, to, to be in your family and knowing who I know of you and what your children must be, that they must be fantastic as well. So uh-huh. um, I'm glad that, that you have them and that it's given you the opportunity to create this course that can bless so many lives. So I mean, I guess since you're talking about your daughter-in-laws and if there might be any stories, have you had that, those difficult relationships and those difficult situations in with your daughter-in-laws and how, how did it go? Like, what did you do with that? <laughs> I, absol- I absolutely have. It's interesting. I have two daughters-in-law right now and I possibly could have two more at some point. And so I met one of them over six years ago and I was not very nice to her. She can tell you all about it. I mean, I, I didn't want any girls around my boys. I thought she liked my son too much. I thought they were too serious. I was even judgmental about what she was wearing. I mean, everything under the sun, I was just not nice to her. And then my other one, I was worried, oh, she didn't have a job in college and high school. Maybe what about her work ethic? I mean, I had all these judgments about them that started trickling in and I I was like, wait a second. And then for me as a daughter-in-law, for various reasons, I had a really difficult relationship with my mother-in-law for more than 20 years. And then life coach school happened. And then I had a greater awareness of what I was thinking and feeling and what I was showing up like. And I started implementing the five things that I teach in this course And that greatly improved my relationship with my daughter-in-laws and my mother-in-law. And none of these three amazing women changed at all. It was me figuring it out. It was me. So, so that's what happened. And then after learning these five secrets, some of the things that you'll be able to do, you'll become aware of what you can and can't change with your daughter-in-law and know how to focus on what you can control You'll stop giving your daughter-in-law power over how you act and feel and start eliminating the shoulds in your relationships so that feeling love for your daughter-in-law becomes a lot easier. You'll know about the love acronym that I created and how to actually put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then help your daughter-in-law. And I teach a fun little game that I play to increase connection with with your daughter-in-law and you'll understand how to implement boundaries with your daughter-in-law as well. Oh, so good. So I'm wondering if you're going to give us a snippet of what those five secrets are or those only like for the people who enter into your course. (laughs) Well, those are the things that, yeah, I won't tell you the names of them, but those are basically what you get from a, what you'll understand those five different things. So there's so many amazing things that can happen as you're, as you're doing it, as you're becoming aware, as you're loving yourself and your daughter-in-law. So. Thank you. We do think that loving someone else means giving them whatever they want. I, you, you alluded to the oxygen mask, right? And, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes we feel like we have to give everybody else what they need first, put the oxygen mask on them first. And it could be easy for someone to believe that, that what's happening between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law is, is just that right. But mm-hmm. there is a line between loving yourself and making someone else happy. We know that at the expense of our own happiness. So how do you help mother-in-laws establish healthy boundaries with their daughter-in-laws? Um, so that they can both love themselves and their daughter-in-law because that's hard. It is. It is. And I have a whole section on boundaries. That's one of them. And Mm -hmm. um, it's just interesting how often this comes up, but how we teach boundaries is a boundary is something you do for yourself. A daughter-in-law boundary is your own emotional border and it's your job to maintain and enforce that border. So a daughter-in-law boundary doesn't necessarily create distance. Instead, it allows for a more authentic connection between you and your daughter-in-law. Mm-hmm. And so I teach them that. Do you have an example you could share with us on that? Perhaps. Ab- absolutely. So maybe your daughter-in-law is always late. And you may think of this as uh, she's disrespectful. She's doing it wrong. Or you could decide to set a simple boundary. Hey, daughter-in-law, I love you so much. And because I love you and I value our relationship, I'd like to make a request of you. When we're having our family meals together or we're meeting to eat out, I know sometimes you're going to run late. I'll wait for 15 minutes and then we're going to start eating. And I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be upset. 
I just don't want to wait longer than 15 minutes. And that simple boundary just allows your daughter-in-law to be who she wants to be and behave how she wants to behave while allowing you to protect yourself and your emotion and your time. And then also to make sure that if she's not there, you go ahead and start eating after 15 minutes and just honor that commitment and that boundary that you made. Yeah. And I think the important thing there is, like you said, is not to make it mean anything or be upset. That's what it is. You said you, you're not going to be upset. And, and that's the piece that you have to be willing to follow up with is if she, if they are late after you have made that request and you say, you're going to start 15 minutes later, like you don't, you don't get to be mad then when she is late, you don't get to make it mean anything. Like she disrespects me or she doesn't love me. You just, you just get to leave it out there because you've made the request now she gets to be who she wants to be and you just get to love. Exactly. Exactly. Because when we're taking care of honoring ourselves rather than expecting our daughter-in-law to do it for us, it requires us to become a higher version of ourselves and it allows our daughter-in-law to have her own emotions and to feel however she wants mm -hmm. and to become, you know, whatever she wants to do. Yeah, that's so true. Because ultimately we all just want to show up the way we want to be able to show up in a loving way. I'm assuming that's what we want in our relationships, because that is what's going to make those relationships grow and, and flourish. And for them to want to be around is when they do feel loved and wanted and respected and, and heard and known all of those things, right? That's all we, that's all any of us want. And in order for that to happen, we just get to we just get to love. And I was reading a book recently um, by Dr. David Data. I think it's how you say his name. I can't remember, but he was talking about love and really you have two choices. You either love or you go through the actions of not loving, right? We think that it like, it's just, we either love or we don't love, but it's really actually two choices to love somebody or else to act not to love them. They both take effort. So why, why choose the one that leads you nowhere? Like why choose to act in a way that doesn't breed love when the other choice is to act in a way that breeds love? They both take effort. They both take action. They both take thought and feeling. Might as well choose the one that's going to be better in the outcome in the end, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And I've also heard of that is you either love someone or you don't understand them. So mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm thinking like, I'm having a hard time feeling love towards this person, then it's like, what don't I understand about them? Yes. So if I can come at it with a lot more curiosity, then it helps me to feel love for that person. Cause I just, I just don't understand where they're coming from. Yeah. If we, and I've heard that same thing, if we truly understood people's perspectives or where they were coming from, we would never feel any frustration or anger towards them. We would, we would just understand. And so living from that place of curiosity is, is really key in, in that relationship as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I would love to know what your boys' reactions have been like as you have nurtured these relationships with your daughter-in-laws. How is, has that been affected in any way? Well, I, my boys are so cute about it because they really do love and appreciate the fact that I really make an effort to include and love my daughters-in-law, just like they're my own, you know, and I, and I think of them that way too. And so they mentioned that to me now and then, and we don't live close to each other, but we communicate a lot. We see them often, but unfortunately, I think some guys feel kind of stuck in between their moms and their wives. And I don't necessarily want my boys to have to experience that. I mean, they, it, for sure it may come up, but as I'm implementing these five things that I've done, it's helped it. So they, you know, they know I love all of them and it's not, I, I don't want them to kind of be stuck in the middle where they feel like they have to choose between me or their wife. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. Feeling stuck never feels good. Mm -hmm. And being stuck in between two people feels even worse mm -hmm. because ultimately they're going to choose their wife over you. So why put them in that? I mean, most likely, I shouldn't say always, but most likely that's probably going to be the choice they have to make if they want to have a, a relationship that is 
moving forward in their, in their marriage. And so why put them in that position to have to choose you? Right. Right. Why make it, it has to be this way or this way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So hard. So what would you say to a mother-in-law who feels like she has truly tried everything and her daughter-in-law is still pulling away. They still don't have the relationship that she wants to have. What's your advice? Well, some of the things that we've talked about, I think would help with this, especially like setting some daughter-in-law boundaries. I think that's helpful. And it also reminds me of President Nelson's talk in April General Conference, where he's talking about the power of spiritual momentum. And the last two suggestions that he makes are to end conflict in our personal life and to seek and expect miracles. We can't change our daughter-in-law but we can plead for guidance and power through Christ's atonement to help us. And we know that God is a God of miracles and the Lord will bless us with miracles. If we seek and expect those miracles to happen. And I believe when we choose to love ourselves and if we want to, then we can choose to love our daughter-in-law. And, and sometimes it's even, you know, if they're in a situation where, Hey, I don't know what else to do. We can do these these two things. And also know that we can still feel love for her. And there's nothing that she can do about that. Mm -hmm. I was just reading president Nelson's talk actually on Monday. And that part really stood out to me that it's time for us to end our conflicts in our own life. There's so much conflict outside of us and going on in the world that it's time for us to, to dissolve those conflicts that we actually have control over. And we can't control the people, but we can control the conflicts that are in our own heart. And it does, it really does start with changing our perspectives and doing this sort of work. That's where conflicts are minimized and, and really can be turned into a strength rather than the weakness that we so feel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think part of coaching, a lot of coaches and, and this is a natural progression because I think it's important for people to understand that they truly do have control, but we go from feeling really dependent upon how somebody else behaves for how we feel, right? Like you said that we give control to them over how we feel. So if they act a certain way, then, and we react, we've given them ultimate control of our feelings and our behavior. And so oftentimes in coaching, we'll swing to this other side, which is very independent where we really believe that we have complete control over our emotions and our, our thoughts, which we do, right. They ultimately our actions and the things we choose to, to be and say in our life and feel all come because of things that we choose to think. But I think in learning that sometimes, and as we teach that to our clients and, and to the people around us, like I've taught this to my children, I've heard my kids say occasionally to people, well, I can't, I can't control how you feel. Like if you're choosing to be offended right now, that's your choice. Right. And I'm like, Oh, that's my coaching gone wrong here because there still is this piece. And I think this is important for all of us to remember that we are relational beings. We are here in relationships for a reason. And we, it is important for us to take into account how our behaviors affect other people. And so as a mother-in-law, like how we choose to act is going to have an effect upon our daughter-in-laws. And yes, it's easy for us to be like, well, how she chooses to react to this is her, you know, that's up to her, but we actually get to make a choice too. And that is how do we want to show up so that everybody around us can show up in the best possible way for them as well. And I'm assuming that these tools that you're talking about, I mean, I know that they help play into that. They help us really take control of how we act, but then also to double check ourselves Mm -hmm. and to make sure that we are being the person we want to be. Exactly. Well, and I have a little acronym I think of with my daughter-in-laws. I love acronyms. So I think of D-I-L, daughter-in-law, and I think discover is for D. I'm finding out, I'm getting curious, I'm learning about them, whatever's going on, it's that discover. And then the I is for intuition. What do I feel in my gut here? What's going on? What do I want? You know, what is speaking to me? That's how I want to show up. And then the L is for love. What would love do here? What would love do for me? What would love do for her? And, and I love thinking of that when I see DIL, I think of discover intuition and love. 
Ooh, that's fantastic. I, I, and obviously that works great for daughter-in-laws, but really that is a great formula for any mm -hmm. relationship in our life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So good. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I think that it is just, like I said, important for all of us to remember that that's why we're here is relationships. And that's ultimately what, I mean, like we don't ever want to be to the end of our life and be like, well, you know, so glad that I didn't have that relationship with that person, right? Like it's going to be quite the opposite. We're going to be so grateful for the time and effort that we put in with our relationships, because that's ultimately what we have in the end is those relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Leanne, so much for being here today and sharing with us your thoughts. Do you have anything else you want to share with us before we leave? And including, would you please share with us where people can find more of you? But if there's anything else you wanted to share before we go, please feel free to yeah. let us know. Yeah. Well, people can follow me on Instagram. It's Leanne Austin coaching or my website, leanneaustin.com. And if you want to know the one question that will greatly improve your relationship with your daughter-in-law, just go to my website or my Instagram bio and click on the one question. And that's there free. It'll teach you something, just a question that will really help you connect with your daughter-in-law, no matter what situation you're in. We all need tips like that for connection. Yeah. Especially I think in relationships like that, where sometimes you just don't quite know you need conversation starters. You need something to, to talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. good. Thank yeah. you, Leanne. We'll link to all of those things in the show notes. Thank you to everybody for being here. And before we go, I want to remind everybody that we do have weekly conversations on Instagram, our Instagram live, come follow me discussions. And they are always so fun and you know, they take the principles that we're learning in our come follow me and we apply our coaching tools to them. So it's kind of a good, well-rounded place, but Leanne, thank you for being here. And Leanne has joined, you've joined me before for those Instagram lives. Haven't you? I feel like you've been there. I yeah. have not, but I need to. Yes. I'm oh. glad I have the challenge now. Yes. <laughs> I feel like you've been there, but obviously that was something else. So anyway, thank you so much, Leanne, for being here and Everybody knows where they can find you. And I would suggest doing so because what a great tool, what great tools for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Here's to loving your daughter and not lie y'all. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.